Now, uh, next in the pipeline, uh, folks are interested in what we're doing next. Uh, we had actually completed work recently on 13 episodes of Deep Sea 7. Uh, this was produced in partnership with Lion Forge Entertainment, and it was co-written by Greg Snegoff and Art White Chamberlain, two of the original writers from the Robotech series. And uh, they also brought in uh, a lot of the original Robotech cast, uh, including Melanie McQueen, Richard Epcar, uh, to voice the characters. And uh, I can show you, actually I showed you a snippet of a scene before. How many of you have seen the snippet that I showed last year? Okay, so, all right, just a couple of you, so I'll, I'll show this again. One scene from the first episode. Uh, and uh, here is the opening titles uh, from the international release, uh, which just uh, uh, was completed. Uh, that's actually coming out very soon, so uh, I hope you guys uh, look forward to seeing this. We're working on uh, getting this delivered to uh, digital channels, and uh, so uh, look for that very soon, coming out uh, with uh, uh, as a co-production with uh, Lion Forge. Now, I, I know a lot of folks are asking about what about the live action film? Uh, what's going on with that? Uh, how many of you folks have followed some news from last year? Uh, all right, we had some interesting developments last year, and it's been extremely exciting and uh, for the Rotec universe. We're now working with Sony Pictures Entertainment. Uh, uh, they picked up the live action rights of the Rotec film, and uh, they brought in an incredible uh, development team to uh, make the live action film. And we're extremely honored to have uh, the producers of 300, uh, Mark Canton and Gianni Lunari uh, on the team. So uh, Gianni Lunari uh, and uh, Mark Canton, uh, they've uh, produced uh, 300, The Immortals, uh, uh, they have an incredible track record that goes way back. Um, Mark Canton actually uh, worked, uh, was the head of uh, Sony Pictures, and he actually greenlit films like uh, the Tim Burton Batman, as well as Starship Troopers. And uh, having these heavyweight producers uh, back this project was, you know, was just absolutely amazing. And they also brought in their writer, uh, Michael Gordon, uh, to work on the story of uh, the Robotech uh, live action adaptation. And uh, they also brought in uh, James Wan, director of Fast and Furious, uh, the most recent Fast and Furious, Furious 7, uh, to direct the film. So this is just a an absolutely incredible uh, production team that they've uh, lined up uh, to make the Robotech live action movie happen. And uh, here we actually have a message from producer Mark Canton from uh, uh, the last Comic Con, which I'll replay for you. I'm Mark Canton, producer of Robotech. I'm sorry I can't be there to share this uh, great day with all of you. Along with my partner, Johnny Nunnery, we are um, thrilled to be uh, involved in the amazing future of Robotech. As I'm sure you all know, uh, the legendary Frank Agrama and his company, Harmony Gold, has um, had the rights for many, many years. Johnny and myself asked our friend and um, uh, colleague, Michael Gordon, who wrote 300, to join us on this. And uh, we're particularly excited because of the addition of not only Michael, but the unbelievably talented young maestro director, James Wan, fresh off of Furious 7 who's come aboard to create this amazing Robotech world and franchise. And um, there's nothing that Johnny and I have done that we're more excited about, whether it's 300 or Immortals or all the other movies we've been fortunate and blessed enough to make in our careers. Uh, this is um, the culmination, going back to Batman with Tim Burton, or Men in Black, or Starship Troopers, or so many other amazing um, um, movies and franchises. We're very proud to have Sony as our partners. For me, it's the first time back at Sony in many years. Be prepared, because the original Robotech is coming 
It's um, not like anything anyone would have seen before. Thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully next year we'll all be sitting together at Comic-Con to celebrate um, the, the film that will either be in production or just made. My best, and um, now I have to go put on my costume for Robotech. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, here's a message from the other producer, Gianni Nunari. Comic-Con fans, how are you? I'm sure you guys are great. Um, <clears throat> I just want to really promise that, uh, I mean, first of all, I'm sorry I couldn't be there. We are working on the fantastic uh, Robotech project. I want to thank Frank Agrama, who is the guy who kept uh, Robotech alive for all these years. Uh, my partner, Mark Anton, as usual, who is always there for me. Uh, the team behind is uh, incredible. Uh, a filmmaker like James Wan, uh, it doesn't need any presentation, he's awesome. Michael Gordon, uh, who's writing right now, and, uh, and, uh, and at the end, myself. Uh, the studio Sony cannot be better than that. I can't wait to be there with you. I can't wait to show you what we're doing. I hope to surprise you in the best way we can in 2016 at Comic Con again. Bye, ciao. Okay, so we're really excited to have uh, the backing of these folks. Now, the other thing that's uh, also happened, uh, which we're very happy about, is that uh, Sony has been an incredible, wonderful partner to work with in terms of the licensing. They realize how valuable all the Robotech licensing is going to be. And you're going to hear over the course of this year a lot of new licensed product uh, starting to come out. Uh, the classic Robotech series, as well as, uh, um, uh, very importantly, you know, we're at a comic expo. Uh, the uh, license are very, very long time license with uh, DC Comics is uh, now over. So uh, this year we'll be announcing an exciting new comic book partner. We're not quite ready to do it yet, but we've got awesome folks. Uh, I mean, we're talking uh, great publishers in industry uh, who are really interested in bringing Robotech Comics back uh, in a very great way. And uh, also, uh, you know, making them available digitally as well because we know that how much, what a huge library, back library, we have in the Robotech Comic universe. So, uh, uh, be on the lookout for that news coming up over the course of this year. Now, uh, we have some unfortunate news, and I want to reflect on somebody that's very important to us in the Robotech universe, and that's uh, Jesus Barrero. Uh, we had worked with Jesus Barrero for quite a while on Robotech. He was involved with Robotech since the 80s, uh, with, since the original Spanish dub of uh, the original Robotech series. Uh, how many of you spe uh, speak Spanish? in the audience, all right, this gentleman here, yes. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard Robotech in Spanish. One of the reasons why it reaches across many countries in Latin America is the quality of the Spanish dub of Robotech is considered very, very good. A lot of fans look on it very fondly. And uh, Jesus was the voice of Rick Hunter and Scott Bernard in Robotech and more recently in Robotech The Shadow Chronicles and Love Live Live. Um, and he was, uh, his voice is held in such high regard, I mean, you could say that he has a golden voice, uh, that uh, he was the voice of Luke Skywalker in the original Spanish dub of Star Wars. Uh, he was also Keith in Voltron, and he was also the lead in many other series, such as Saint Seiya, Mazinger. I mean, if you look at his IMDb, it's just dizzy, you know, how many lead voices uh, he had done uh, over the course of his career, and we're very sad that he had passed. But we were really grateful that we had worked with him uh, more recently. Um, uh, here is a photo of uh, Jesus at San Diego Comic Con. This was a few years back. He actually came with his business partner. Uh, to his right is Victor Covarrubias. Uh, they manage uh, CB Audio together, and they actually dub a lot of really uh, high quality programs into uh, Latin American Spanish uh, out of Mexico City. And then to the right is uh, that. 
is Diego Barassi uh, from Exim Entertainment. He was actually responsible uh, in the mid-2000s getting a lot of Latin American licensing done for Robotech. And so he was very instrumental in terms of uh, getting us to reach out to Latin American fans. So these guys, I mean, uh, they deserve a lot of credit in terms of uh, Robotech's fandom in Latin America. And uh, this is uh, Jesus along with uh, Patricia Acevedo. Uh, she was also the lead of many female voices in the Robotech universe. Uh, they worked together uh, since back then, and uh, we got them back together again on Robotech Shadow Chronicles and Love Little Wide. Uh, one thing that's interesting is not all of the Robotech dubs were done with their voices. Uh, I actually first found out about them because uh, Robotech the Sentinels was dubbed uh, elsewhere. I believe it was dubbed in Argentina. Uh, and then Robotech, uh, there was a remastered dub, a 5.1 dub of Robotech, and that was done with different voice actors. And I remember when that happened, uh, this was when we first found out, you know, there were fans asking, well, but what about the original voice actors? And then we actually met uh, Jesus Barrero at a Comic-Con. Uh, actually, I, Memo here uh, helped uh, arrange that meeting, and we found him to be such an absolutely wonderful, charming person, and we found out more about the back history of the original release of Robotech. We were like, you know, when an opportunity to dub Shadow Chronicles came out, there was a push to actually get it done as cheaply and quickly as possible, and we were like, ah, let's, let's uh, put the brakes on that. Let's, instead of trying to do it quick and cheap, let's do it right. And so, uh, for that project, we actually got uh, Jesus Barrero and the original cast of board again. And it was worth it, because a lot of fans, they were really excited to hear that we actually cared about the, uh, the quality of the Spanish dubbing. And so, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, received very warmly in Latin America. And then also, when we did Robotech Love, Love, Live, uh, it's... It's tragic that we can't work with uh, Jesus again in the future, but we're glad that we had this last opportunity to work with him on Love Live Live, you know, back in 2013. Uh, uh, here we are. Uh, this was uh, before we started work on Shadow Chronicles. Uh, down in uh, Chile, uh, we were down in Santiago to reach out to fans there, and uh, it was a wonderful experience uh, working with them. And uh, here is Greg Snegoff, the American voice of Scott Bernard with Jesus, the Spanish voice of Scott Bernard. And uh, 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 Greg Snagoff is uh, actually a uh, polyglot. He speaks many different languages. He's uh, as fluent in Italian as he is in English. And uh, he actually spoke Spanish surprisingly well. And uh, uh, him and Jesus actually hit it off. And here's Jesus at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, he, so he didn't work just on Robotech and Macross. Uh, he worked on Mazinger, Star Wars, so it was just fun to see him surrounded by just all the different properties he had touched over the course of his career. And uh, here we are again. Uh, so this is uh, Jesus uh, with uh, me, uh, Scott Glasgow, the music composer for Road to Shadow Chronicles Memo, and uh, that's Neil Kaplan, uh, one of the uh, newer voices of Optimus Prime in the Transformer series. And uh, Jesus did also have the opportunity to meet with Carl Masick before Carl had passed. And so uh, uh, here's all of us gathered uh, down in San Diego back then. And uh, here's Jesus at work on uh, Robotech Love Live Live. Uh, it was actually nice that we were able to gather some behind the scenes interviews with Jesus. Uh, he actually gathered some of the cast together and had them interview uh, regarding their work on Shadow Chronicles and Love Live Live. Actually, how are we on time? Okay, eight minutes. All right, we're gonna barrel through this kind of quick. Uh, this is a short interview with Jesus. Um Robotech, el amor sigue vivo. Hola amigos, soy Jesús Barrero. Soy actor, director de doblaje. Muchos de ustedes ya conocen mi trayectoria. Llevo más de 40 años en este negocio. En anime he participado en series como Massinger Z, soy Koye Kabuto. En Robotech, de la cual hablaremos un poquito más tarde. Soy Rick Hunter. 
también participé en Star Wars, soy Luke Skywalker, y he participado en películas de Disney. Ahora quiero hablarles un poco de Robotech, como les decía hace poco, esa serie que fue un par de aguas, y era pues, como una especie de telenovela, digamos, en los dibujos animados, porque tenía aventura, romance y mucha acción. Era la, la batalla del bien contra el mal, la fuerza Robotech, la fuerza militar, terrestre o humana que luchaba contra los extraterrestres que llegaron a invadir la Tierra y eran los famosos Impi. All right, so um, we'll actually put, uh, we'll actually have the full interview on YouTube because uh, I believe we have subtitles for this. <laughs> so uh, for those uh, for those of you uh, who don't speak Spanish, but uh, yeah, it was actually wonderful to get uh, to get that uh, interview piece with him. I, I know where uh, we got the next uh, panel about to come in. But uh, we got a little bit of time for questions. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, what's the price tag on the 20 box set? Oh, the 20 box set. Okay, the MSRP is, I believe, 89.95. But if you wait around for one of those Black Friday sales, I've seen it go for half that or less. So uh, you can find pretty good deals on that. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, the comics are they going to follow Academy? Because uh, Academy. Are you oh, going to yeah. continue they, Academy, or they, is it going to follow the old series? They are... The new publishers will have the right to expand on anything related to the classic universe. So they're going to take... Uh, the publishers uh, are very, very interested in taking this in a new direction. And so we're going to be 100% behind that, you know, because we want to tell new stories in the comic universe. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I know the... Movie version is right now in development, it's early stages, yes. uh, production and script. There are plans to do merchandise, tie in with the, oh, the live action before, like previous. Yes. Uh, Sony is not looking at this as just a one off movie, they're looking at this as a franchise, you know, oh. and uh, they want to do this right. So, can you tell us right now if there are at least a script based on the classic? Because uh, one well, of the they, producers they want, say there's. Yeah, they, I mean, they want to. They want to cover. They want to cover the story of the whole Robotech series. So it, it'll be too much for just one movie. You know, <laughs> expect you know more than one movie. But just saw uh, what do you call it? Uh, you have Sony was uh, announced last year. Right now, you announced Columbia Pictures. Oh, Columbia Pictures is owned by Sony. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Uh, how will the uh, tone of the live-action film compare with the animated series? Uh, it, it, it does definitely need to be uh, you know, rebooted and updated for the sensibilities of today's audience. Because look at uh, the Marvel Ultimate Universe, which more closely resembles the cinematic universe, versus classic Marvel from you know, back during world, you know, the world wars. And so, you know, there's a definitely a very different tone. And so same with Robotech, you know, I mean, even now people look at, well, uh, you know, what about the classic Mecha? But, the, you know, like the F-14 jet fire has not been in service for years. You know, it's been retired from the Navy, and then it's been replaced by the F-22, and then now you're already hearing about the F-35 now coming into service. So we're already, you know, generations of jet fighters ahead of where, you know, 1985, when, at that time, Top Gun was the big, you know, uh, dog fighting movie of its day, you know, versus the, the, you know, what you see in films today. So then, can we expect the new Mecha to be based off of modern jet fighters? Yeah, so you can expect everything to be modernized, timelines to be moved up forward, you know, when, once, once upon a time, 1999 was the future, <laughs> you know, you can expect the timeline to be moved around so that we would, our kids would look to the future, to the rebooted timeline, so. You can expect a fair amount of uh, modernization, but the one thing that's the most important is the drama of the characters. You can expect that core to be maintained you know, throughout the universe. Uh, for those of you who asked uh, ask some good questions, we got stuff for you. Come get it. All right. All right, we're, we're three minutes out, so thank you very much. Uh, if you got more questions, we're going to be at the